everyone and welcome to yet another episode of Indian Oil Connect. Today we are in conversation with Mr. Subhajit Sarkar, Executive Director of Operations of Indian Oil's Refineries Division. Hello sir, welcome to Indian Oil Connect. Thank you. So sir, you are in charge of a very critical function in the Refineries Division of Indian Oil. So what are the key innovations or, or technologies that are under consideration or planned to be adopted across refineries to improve distillate yield and energy efficiency? Yeah, so I am the uh, in charge of the operations of the nine refineries of Indian oil. Refineries starting from Digboy in the northeast to Paradip in the east coast and uh, Gujarat in the west coast. Uh, all these refineries are very much technological. Uh, they are having a good technology where a uh, uh, lot of important things are done. Uh, here, the energy is something which is always an important parameter. We have a parameter called fuel and loss where we use uh, the energy as fuel to heat up the process uh, liquids. So the lower the fuel loss, the better it is. So with technology, we try to improve our energy efficiency. And uh, so far, we have a lot of uh, technologies that we have uh, embarked upon to increase the energy efficiency. So in energy part, uh, uh, the best benchmark is the Solomon benchmark, which we have been doing uh, on a corporate basis. And in the energy parameter, which is called EII, the Energy Intensity Index, we are somewhere in quartile three. Quartiles are the 25 percentage of the uh, refineries which participate in the benchmark. So third quartile is uh, between 50 to 75 percent. So we have been trying to increase our performance. And as a result of that, we have actually in some of the refineries come even up to quartile one. In one of our refinery, we have uh, reached quartile one and we are sustaining for the last three months. So once we attain the whole year, it will be a benchmark for us. And one of the other refinery also, uh, the we are in quartile two. We are planning to have two refineries at least in quartile two in this financial year. And one of the big refineries in the Eastern Coast also might come to quartile two. As of now, it's a very heartening thing to find out that in some of the refineries which we had written off that they can't come to quartile one even by 2030. There are the small refineries in the Northeast. Those refineries we found that have the potential to come to quartile one. That is the top 25% by this financial year end. So it was a big revelation and this financial year end means not any long-term investment, just small operation improvements and certain critical decisions we need to take, which will increase our energy efficiency performance. So these are certain important things. Now. When it comes to technology and innovation for energy improvement, we have certain systems we are tied up with some of the world's best in uh, AI, in digitalization, who give us the uh, real-time assessment of the performance that we have in the nine refineries. Distillate yield is something which is, again, to some extent dependent on the configuration of the unit, the types of unit have, uh, the Nelson Complexity Index, that is one important parameter which shows how complex your unit is. So the more complex a unit is, the NCI, Nelson Complexity Index, will be higher. So our refineries are having NCI of 7 to say 11. So in our unit, with certain MCIs, we try to maximize the distillate yield by two ways. One is by improving the root quality. So when the distillates increase, we get more money because distillates are the most value added products of a refinery. But the price of the crude will also be high because they will give you more distillates. So we have a system of optimizing the crude and see which crude fits best into our system with the given infrastructure, given NCI. And then we see how best we can extract the distillates from there. We are having an IP tool. Uh, we can say it's a planning tool from crude purchase to up to the RO, where our products are sold. So it integrates and tells us what is the best way that we should buy, operate and sell. The other part is making some changes. So we had some uh, projects like the RUP, Rested Upgradation Project in Gujarat, DYIP, that's a distillate yield improvement plan in some of the other refineries, where we make some hardware changes and try to improve the distillate yield. And last year, the year 24-25, our distillate yield was the highest ever. It was 80.6. So 
so this is how we are improving in our disability law so uh, uh, you mentioned about benchmarkings so uh, how are you using the global ben- benchmarking digital simulations and predictive analytics to ensure that internal refineries remain amongst the most efficient and reliable in the country so there are around 20 odd parameters in the solomon benchmarking which covers the entire gamut of refinery operations and of course the benchmarking happens with the pipelines division also but the refinery division benchmarking is very uh, extensive and covers a lot of parameters starting from energy profitability and environment also so the four important parameters i would say which we actually take to uh, understand and take us forward is one is the eii which i told you which is the energy intensity index the other one is operational availability operational availability is how much time your units are available for the operation the other one is vei volumetric expansion index which shows how much of lighter volume more volume lighter products you make from the feed so suppose we take 1 uh, liter of feed and convert it into 1.2 liters of product so we are actually adding value to it so higher the vei higher the disability and more the profits that one gets the other one the fourth one that we measure is the capacity utilization so it shows us what percentage time the unit was operating and at what capacity one part is you utilize your assets which is this capacity utilization the other part is make more value value added products which is vei third part is making your units operationally available for the maximum possible time which is oa oa considers the downtime also and the other one as i said is eii which is also a very important parameter so these are the parameters we use to benchmark ourselves compare with the peers and try to improve now when it comes to improving we are having three different uh, strategy groups who are constantly working on this how do we imbibe the ai part because human intelligence has its own limitation ai is something which is propelled by hi and but it gives you astonishingly very good results something which can't, you can't expect also so here we engage with lot of uh, technology providers who have been doing good job in ai they give us certain inputs and we see where we can fit into there were small small, small efforts from our side by our own is department to go into some process ais so we developed some internal softwares where our people looked into the process parts like say predicting the exchanger cleaning time suppose there's a heat exchanger which needs to be cleaned intermittently this software developed by our is team will tell you when is the right time for the exchanger to be cleaned so that prediction is beyond human capability it, so the other initiative is the digital twin that also we have made for some of the important units and it has been developed in house by our own is team uh, some of the critical units uh, we have the exact replica of that particular unit and but it is not real time and online so a person who is going to work in that unit will first work on this he will give the certain inputs you'll see how the things vary and then based on that he will try to understand how the unit works so there are two part of it there is one which we call ots that is it's a training simulator so which is much easier than the digital twin digital twin is something which is like uh, a real time but it will not be into the actual system unless you allow it to so we start with the ots operating training simulator move to the digital twin and with the digital twin we can make a lot of changes even for modifications also uh, and now in some of the units which have been installed with these uh, twins so to say but these are of course in the very nascent state those people say that without this twin they find it difficult to work okay so such such is the benefit that we are getting and of course if you if you rope in some more experts in the field things will improve over here also sir uh, indian oil has recently launched a very insightful project called sprint so under sprint one of the major element is strengthening the core operations so how is the operation stream of refineries uh, contributing to make uh, our refineries operations more smarter yeah so yeah sprint is a very innovative initiative by our chairman which was launched on 1st of april this year uh, it is really a initiative which 
makes the workforce of the refinery sprint. So far, see, there are two concepts. Like, Indian oil is a behemoth. So we are having nine refineries. So we need to move, but taking all nine together makes our movement a little slow. But now we have to sprint with all the nine refineries. The essence of going to our core and sprinting is taking everyone along. So in the coming three years, we have a well-chartered, well-documented action plan. There was a very good exercise involving all concerned over a period of time to charter our action plan as to how we should go ahead, keeping in mind the various capabilities of the refineries, our workforce, so that it is a realistic target and we are able to achieve those targets. The targets, of course, will be monitored, are being monitored by a special group. And we'll see how we can stick to the targets by making some course corrections, making some improvements midway. EII is a very important parameter, which, which is uh, the measure of the energy that we consume. So now we are planning to take all our nine refineries to quartile one by financial year 2028. So this is one core activity. The other core, I would say, is actually improving what we are already having. So one part is the investment, which will always be based on IRR now. The other part is the quick wins, which doesn't call for any investment, where we can improve our operational capabilities by more focus, more vigilance, and greater efforts by all. So this print is this this initiative has actually rejuvenated us. Everyone feels that yeah, this is something where we have to be more agile, we have to show our performance, we have to compete with each other in a healthy manner, and take the corporation forward so that the all the parameters of operation, which we are told before, the EII, the distillate yield, the operational availability, these things, because each one is connected very internally and integrally with the others. So if you start improving one, we'll get effect in the others also. So this is how we have been thinking. By this intermittent appraisals interactions, we are ensuring this focus remains and we are able to reach the desired goals by the year 27-28. And so this is how we'll energize our people and strengthen our core and go ahead in our refinery business. Sir, indeed, that was a very elaborate blueprint for the project sprint and what our operations team of refineries division would be doing for the project sprint. Thank you so much, sir, for that insightful discussion on Indian Oil Connect. So, this conversation was indeed a comp gave us a compelling look into the refinery operations of Indian Oil. As we continue to energize the nation, please stay tuned with Indian Oil Connect for more such conversations. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.